You know what time it is. Press it. And now, let's get into it. If you haven't seen my other two videos on Temptation Island, I would say you should probably watch those first. Because this one, I'm not going to really be explaining too much of the show and just getting into my thoughts. Which is, Temptation Island Season 3 is exhausting. I think my feelings about the whole season could honestly be summarized at uh, 17 minutes and 36 seconds into the first episode. Uh, when Aaron says... Jesus. Exactly, Aaron. Cheese it. Now, for what it's worth, I think it's important to establish the characters in this season. There's Erica and Kendall, uh, and Kendall eerily looks like the iRobot robot, um, and I think that's actually a, a great comparison for the guy because he's absolutely a machine, and I will get into that later. There's Aaron and Corey. Um, Corey is like Ryan Gosling from Drive if uh, he was just crying the whole time and never killed anybody. There's Chelsea and Tom, and then there's Kristen and Jason Momoa. Uh, I'm joking. It's Julian. Julian Momoa. I'm lying. He's not related to Jason Momoa, but he definitely looks like the dude, and he's built like him. Now, this is my third time around this burning fireball of crying woman TV. Uh, that is Temptation Island Season 3. And I paid attention to other things uh, a little bit more than the characters. Firstly, I want to acknowledge that Mark L. Wahlberg uh, is no longer the dark emperor of feelings. In fact, he's this really genuine, basically therapist. He really digs into how people feel, and he really asks them... Specifically the women, you know, how does that make you feel? We I mean, do that for the guys too, but with the women, he was very sort of like pointed because I think uh, in this case, if we were to break this up into teams, team woman was dealing uh, with, I would say, a lot more bullshit than team man. Oh. Next thing I noticed immediately in episode one is every guy had this beaded wooden necklace. Every single dude had this necklace. And within the context of the game that is Temptation Island season three, this necklace is important because I think it actually is designed to increase listening stamina because my third time watching this show, I realized how much talking all these people have to do, specifically the ones in the couples. You know, a lot of them, after night one, they're always like, I don't know why I came here. I'm really nervous. I'm missing my significant other. Listen, man, I was just thinking about all that talking and how that Slush. would just burn me out. I'm surprised no one quits on night one and goes, I can't wake up another day and I have to talk to 12 people all the time. I got to go home. It's just too much. Another thing that is like glaring in the season, just Something that really catches your eye uh, is this motherfucker's Bruh. hat. It's the only thing you notice in the first 20 minutes, and it kind of just absorbs all your attention for the remaining of the first episode. All you're thinking about is who is that fucker with the hat, and why is it not available as DLC in Red Dead Redemption 2? Before watching the season, I saw trailers, and they seemed to lead on that this one is going to be spicy, it's going to be intense. I was thinking to myself, well, in the last one, they had an almost threesome, and it got kind of crazy. What could they possibly do this time? And I'll tell you, they got four people from New Jersey, and that immediately spiced things up. Jason Momoa and one of the other dudes already they're just barking at each other. My guy. Speak up, bro. Say it with your chest. Oh, it's here. Can't hear I'm you. I'm Jersey, bro. too. I'm concerned with your girl, not you, bro. <laughs> Didn't take long. All but 20 minutes, and the Jersey came out. I ain't worried about you, dog. Oh, you don't listen. That's not one I'm bit, him. bro. Just know that. And to make it a little bit more exciting for me, I decided to make a wager with myself how many couples I thought were going to stay together. I think it's easy to go off the little intros and try to psychoanalyze these people after knowing them for, I don't know, six minutes or something. But instead, I was like, all right, let me go with some basic probability here. And I thought it was going to be two out of four. I'm not going to tell you if I was right or not, because it's up to you if you want to watch the show. But let me tell you, some couples did stay together and some did not. I have to say the things I picked up on this time around were a bit more nuanced. You know, the, the, I was kind of seeing past the structure of the show and just noticing little weird things. Like, it's kind of funny to see how uh, the, the people in the couples would choose singles that kind of had like a similar face to themselves. I know that's a thing where, you know, you, you're attracted to people who kind of look like you and so that part was kind of interesting seeing that they either chose people that kind of looked like them or looked like their couple but slightly different the singles kind of bothered me this season because they just felt a little too self-aware it's one thing to be crazy to try to get camera time but then it's one thing to really try to sell this i don't know fake persona to the camera and try to get some girl in love with you uh, just for the sake of tv that part was really palpable with some of the contestants and it was just kind of annoying something that's been consistent for all three seasons is when the guys and the girls would make Make some corny intro one of the single women contestants points out a girlfriend and goes she's not happy and then even the guys do it too they'll go he's not happy yeah 
They're not happy. Why would they be happy? Who's sitting there thinking, oh, I'm so glad my significant other has this wildly attractive group of single people here ready to demolish our relationship. Now, you remember what I said earlier about Kendall being an absolute machine. It didn't take long for this dude to break away from his relationship. Uh, he turned off that part of him very quickly. He carries on the Temptation Island tradition of having a threesome. Nice man. You did it. Kendall marches through the season like an emotionally lacerated Terminator. All right. This dude is just trying to f the trauma away. You can see into the back of his soul through his eyeballs. There's something down there that is dark and heavy. And you see it all the way to the end, even at the, at the reunion. He try. He's really just pushing something down. It's not other people that he's pushing down on him. It's like, you know, it's in his heart. It's his stomach. To the point where Mark almost pleads with him. He, he doesn't even try to get him to cop to his behavior. He just looks the man in the eyes and says, who hurt you? And Kendall doesn't flinch. He just kind of twists his lip and he pushes it back down again. It's honestly very sad. That moment actually underscores a lot of the theme of this season where I think more more than the others, the couples in this situation were very emotionally broken. It wasn't like the last season where it was just sort of a mismatch in expectations and fundamentals about, I don't know, how these people view the world. You could see each one of these people was either like inflicting something on their partner or the partner wasn't, you know, realizing their full self value. The whole thing just got kind of heady. And after a while, as I always say, when something's really heavy, I just felt like I had to start smoking cigarettes to watch the rest of the show. It just, you think there's going to be like twerking and drama and th there's, there's definitely some of that, but not enough to compensate for the sheer amount of, ah, ow. That's a lot of the season. Ah. A good example of the ah is watching the dude Corey, the knockoff Ryan Gosling. That guy, man, I mean, he just has the demeanor of being trapped in a basement, but outside. You could see in his eyes, he sees the mental prison that he's stuck in, and he's got to get out. And what stinks is people, I think, picked up on that about him, but they couldn't really articulate what they were seeing, and I don't think Corey is really equipped to articulate what he's feeling. And all in all, it just kind of seems like a lot of people trying to diagnose something that they don't really get. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. Something a little lighter that I noticed is it's crazy how alcohol turns people into NPCs. I mean, just look at this moment. Do you think I'm ingenuine? You think I'm fake? That's how I feel. Like we're around straight. I don't think you're ingenuine and fake. I think that there's situations where you take advantage of them. Do I blame you? No. What the fuck was that? What was that? That was like talking to someone in a marketplace in, in like oblivion or something. Also, Blake had far too many moments flipping off the camera for being a doctor. Doctors are regular people, but you know, you don't want to be a doctor on national television being like... I picture him doing that while people are out on anesthesia. Just... Bruh. You. Just in general, just a lot of weird NPC behavior. Uh, kind of like this. It's not your problem. Oh, no. He it's literally came problem. up to me and started talking to me. It's not your problem. Bro, I don't care. If you start talking Bro. to me, then let's start talking like, shit. A couple offshoot just kind of funny, crazy things is one, this girl Alexis out of the single girls group. She spelled her name. I mean, just look at her name. A-L-E-X-C-Y-S. That looks like a prescription. I've never seen Alexis spelt that way. The dude Tom is like 37 and he goes on a date with a girl that's 22. And I just thought it was really funny that he was sitting there trying to pretend like he had a whole lot in common with this young woman that he met maybe a week prior. Look, I'm not age relationship shaming, but don't even pretend like if you're 40, you can really relate to a 22 year old. Picture that right now. 40 year old looking at a 20 year old. So <laughs> just what do you mean when you say Walkie slush. What does that mean? I'm, I'm so curious. So is the walkie slush, is that a drink? Oh, it's, uh, it's part of a TikTok. Right. TikTok. I have heard of this. I have heard of that. My client's kid. Yeah, anyway. Out of all the wild that went on this season, I have to really commend Erica because I feel she had probably some of the most vulnerable personal growth moments and the fact that on camera, in moments that I think would otherwise crush people, I mean, absolutely hurt them. She just really accepted it for what it was and just kept walking forward. And I, I thought that was the hardest part out of it all. Because it's, it's one thing to go on the show and that's this crazy and you kind of expect maybe some wild things. But to watch your partner have a threesome and then just not cry at all. And, and just, you know, she said it in her own words, she went numb. But to see that person, you know, multiple times do that with other people and to have all those cameras on you and just go, 
yeah, is what it is. I got to respect myself and not put myself in this situation. I think that's uh, I think it's commendable, at, at least. That's the very least you could say about it. Comparatively, I would say this season overall, it just, it kind of lacked what the first two had and like wild and crazy and just ended up being, I don't know, you, you go through it a little bit more with the contestants. And I think the second season, in retrospect, it's a fun watch. It's crazy, but it's it's entertaining. You know, even season one, you know, they're kind of messy and <laughs> but whatever. But this one, ah, it, you just feel bad. That's it. The reunion is, is just kind of bleak. You just feel bad. I'm actually going to say this whole season has an interesting through line about personal development that the other two seasons don't have. The other two seasons are they're kind of that, you know, traditional reality TV. And I know I just sat here and said for the whole time, like, ugh, the show is like heady and it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel bad because I think out of all three seasons, the contestants on this show are very tangible people and what they're going through is very tangible. So in that way, it's kind of interesting. And you're watching a pretty raw personal development thing unfold because what what some of them deal with is not just a matter of like your partner you got to get out of there it's like this person's kind of but also i realize things about myself and uh, how long have i let myself be this way and very kind of deep you know stuff you need a cigarette for i mean this season did it all there's fighting there's arguing about chicken there's a threesome and there's these guys. Damn straight you did it on purpose when Blake was like, you know what it is, that's the same. Because I'm the pot, baby. I feel like in season four, they need to get a couple menaces in there. And by that, I mean, I think they really need to go crazy and maybe bring a couple that goes, we want to go wild in here and we want to get everybody <laughs> and just wreak havoc. They're going after people in the couples. Just, hey, now that my boyfriend's in the other house, I just want to let you girls know I do it all. So hit me up <laughs> or maybe a couple that's very content and they go in there and they're like, um, yeah, we don't actually plan on hooking up or exploring at all. We want to play everybody in here. We want to just dog everybody out. We both are trying to come out of this and see who gets more phone numbers, who breaks more hearts and then get to the reunion and then just really wear it like a championship belt between the two of them. Like we broke everybody's heart in this room. Uh, we are undefeated in here. We are 24 and 0. All of you can kiss our asses. So yeah, and, and that's kind of it. This season didn't have like toe sucking and all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, there was twerking and there was like definitely horny stuff going on, but I didn't feel it was egregious as the last season minus a grown woman having to watch her uh you know ex-boyfriend sleep with a bunch of people which is it's crazy i would have to say at the end of the day the thing i really wanted to know at the end of the season is what the f happened to that guy in the cowboy hat gang <laughs> hey she's playing i had to switch it up yeah might lose a few ask me if i give a fuck yeah.